Okay. Uh, my apologies. The video just froze. The screen froze and stopped recording. So I had to hit pause and start again for part two here. Oh, I'm so tired of technology, man. I got to come to the office because my Wi-Fi is toast at home because my wife's business and who knows why. <sighs> <laughs> All right, so I only have a few more things to say, I think. Um, I think I was talking about, yeah, rhetoric as practice. as the, That's the kind of the, the focal, the view of the class is to think about rhetoric as the thing that we do sort of out in the world. Maybe it's in the classroom, whatever, but it's like an, an attempt to connect, to engage, to, to win, to influence, to persuade. Um, and we are going to be looking at, historically speaking, how it is that certain, you know, theorists, scholars, whatever, have written about what was happening around them at the time, right? And so, as we will see in the video on Hannah Arendt and the public and the private, um, I'm really interested in this business of conditions, right? And so, what is it that gives rise to changes in rhetorical practice? Just in the last 10 years, I've noticed wild changes in how it is that people, citizens, engage one another. Social media has a lot to do with it. Um, you know, the sort of generational shift has something to do with it. Um, frustration over lack of economic opportunity has something to do with it. So there's lots of sort of social conditions that are changing and rhetoric and how we conduct our, our attempts to persuade and convince and reason with or manipulate or influence or whatever, it shifts as well, right? And so in terms of my work, in terms of how I approach rhetoric, I'm interested in the relationship between conditions, like, you know, the fact that our climate is, is uh, starting to produce some really strange and scary um, and turbulent, you know, weather patterns, and it's affecting how people live. Those are conditions, right? Jobs, opportunities, those are conditions. The fact that restaurants can't f hire enough workers because workers are saying we've had enough, we're not dealing with these conditions anymore. That's also relevant to how it is that we engage one another. All right, so rhetoric is happening amidst all of these kind of hard wired realities, these conditions, um, and they affect it. And so toward the end of the, our time together, we're going to be looking at 20th century. We'll be looking at some of this stuff toward the very end and how it's changing the nature of public engagement and persuasion. Um, so that's kind of the, the, the focus, the perspective of the class. And I should tell you that, you know, even though this is a class where we're going way back to the ancient Greeks, um, and, you know, it, it could be easy to think of this as like totally irrelevant, useless, ancient, far gone, kind of old fuddy-duddy stuff. Um, I'm sort of sympathetic with that, with that sort of view of things. I should just say that like my approach to the, the tradition of rhetoric is to always be asking about the utility of the concepts that we're studying. So for me, the only reason that I'm continue to be interested in Aristotle and Plato and um, the sophists is because they were grappling with things and they were asking questions and they were proposing sort of ways forward that are actually still relevant today, you know. Um, and I think we'll see that. And that's really the, the point of the papers and the assignments is to, to get us to be thinking about how the, the, the stuff that they were struggling with and asking questions about is still sort of relevant and pressing and, uh, you know, of issue today. Obviously, we have new you know, conditions and new challenges and um, new variations of these old questions. But a lot of them are very simple. Questions about ethics, questions about the relationship between my ability to influence you using any means necessary and truth or morality, right? And, and what is at stake when I am attempting to persuade you or get you to go in this direction? Um, these are hard, deep, kinds of issues and we'll be kind of grappling with some of them. All right. So don't want to take too long here. Another couple minutes. Um, what else do I need to cover? Yeah. So two weeks on the ancients, a week on Renaissance and uh, early modern, and then two more weeks on 20th century stuff. Two tests, three papers. I'll get those posted as quickly as possible. Please reach out if you have any questions or confusions or struggles at any point. Um, you know, I'll try to be on the, web, the the Canvas page as much as possible, like every day, just kind of seeing how things are looking. 
Um, but apart from that, you're not going to probably see or hear too much from me because most of the, the content is already created and it's already up there. All right. So I usually like to do a weekly check in on Monday mornings. I'll just send out a little email to say, hello, be looking out for this reminder about this. Hey, don't forget, you know, that kind of stuff. Other than that, um, it's it's really on your, you're on your own steam here. And so I want to just cycle back to the point I was making at the beginning about just please be very organized. Please be very mindful about the, the load of reading and the material that you need to work through each week. You can't just sit down for 30 minutes here and there and just kind of glance at things and expect to be okay. All right. So you got to spend the time with the readings, with the material. Um, if you have questions about it, that's fine. I will spend whatever time you know is necessary to help you understand this stuff to the best of my ability. Um, so, because I really want everyone to succeed, this can be a tough class, um, and it's especially tough if you fall behind on the material and you get lost. So, hopefully, there's a lot of um, you know avenues for you to work your way through the material. I try to shore up the readings and the lecture materials as much as possible with different kinds of supplements. And then, of course, I'm here. So hoping everyone's well, hoping that you're staying cool out there. Um, we have a pool in our backyard, and I was floating in it yesterday at like 3 o'clock in the afternoon, and I had to get out because it was too warm in the pool, right? So it's scary times here. Um, so take good care of yourselves and hope you have a little bit of fun, learn a few things this semester, and I'll be looking forward to, to chatting with you um, and uh, wishing you the best, gang. Good luck.